Hello everyone and welcome to this week's Extend Script tutorial. In this one, I'm going to be showing you how to make a script for Premiere that will batch merge your clips and audio together so that you don't have to go through and individually click them. So usually how you do this is if you have a clip and a piece of audio, you'd right click um, both of them and choose Merge Clips and then choose whether you want to merge by the audio, time code, in or out points, etc. But this script is going to automatically do this um, and align them based on the endpoints, assuming that they're the same length. So this is only for uh, syncing accompanying audio files that are already set up, but you could do a bit of adjustments to make this script work for clips with varying lengths as well. So let's go ahead and run the script and see what happens. It's going to first tell us that we need to cr uh, create a new sequence. This is actually a caveat with Premiere scripting in that we can't just create a sequence with preset settings. We have to select one of the presets ourselves. So once we select two there, it's going to go ahead and create our two compositions or sequences here. You can see we have our main clip here and down in the third audio track, our audio track lined up perfectly. So as you can see, these, uh, assuming this didn't have audio, this would line up exactly perfectly with the clip. And we could go through and do this to all of our clips, whether we have 10 or 100 or 1000 and run through and make sure they're all put together. And as I said, sometimes there'll be varying lengths. This is something that you can kind of mess with to try and get to work better. I just selected two random clips here to put together, but um, you could tell the script to maybe move the endpoint and then move it back or something to try and line it up better. Let's go ahead and get into the scripting part though. So everything we're gonna do here is going to be hand coded except for these two functions here, which are just checking if a name given uh, is a audio type or a video type and we'll return true or false, whether that's true or false. Um, these you can just copy and paste from the code attached down in the description below. But uh, let's go ahead and code the rest, and we'll start with a new JavaScript file. So the first thing I always like to do, um, if we're gonna do something, especially in Premiere, is just to create a function. In most programming languages, or at least C++, you have int main. So I just call it main, and then we'll have a function called main down here. This is where everything is going to take place, um, but before it, we're going to define two variables, one for the Premiere project we are assuming they have open, and the other one for the project item down here, which contains all of our clips. So I'll create a variable called project, and I'll set this equal to our app.project, and then I'll create something called project item, and that's going to be equal to our project.root item. And the reason we're making these global um, outside of our function here is so that they can be recognized in any of the functions um, because our project is always going to be open when the script is run. So it's pretty easy to say that we should always have a variable for it as well. So if we go inside of here and refer to project, it's still going to know what we're talking about even though we're inside of a function. All right, so now we're gonna create a bunch of variables for all the things we're gonna be tracking, um, checking, and adding, and then inserting. So the first thing is we're gonna make an array called the merge array, and we'll set this equal to an empty array. What this is gonna do is contain all of the audio and video clips that need to be merged. So each index of this array, index one is gonna have an audio and a video file. And it's essentially gonna loop through this array and say for each one, take the, the first index and then take the audio and video and put them together. So it's just kind of storing the data in a more complex way. Then we'll create a variable called temp name, this name, audio check, this sequence, audio tracks, audio track one, video tracks, and video track one. Now that might seem like a lot of variables, but we are going to be using all of them and most of them are for checking the name of our footage and then comparing it to the other files to see, hey, is this the same file name um, but an audio? Like, is it a WAV file but with the same name? And then we need to refer to this sequence and also the audio track so that we can insert these clips we find um, inside of our project item here into the sequence. Also, in the original code, I, I put a comment here sort of explaining the merge array. So essentially, it's gonna work like this. Let's say the index is equal to zero, the first item inside of it. Just for an example, the first index, there's gonna be sort of a sub-index. So in the first item of the array, the first index of that is gonna be the footage, and then the second is gonna be the audio. And actually these are, I think, gonna contain the names as well, because everything is gonna be based on name comparisons. And so we're gonna take both of these and just take the files and import them into the sequence. So the first thing we wanna do is simply loop through all of the items we have in here. To do that, it's a little bit more complicated than what we usually do in After Effects. 
We'll start off by saying var i is equal to zero because we're actually gonna be referring to the children of our project item, which is an array rather than just um, starting at the index one. We're gonna say i is less than our project item dot children dot num items i plus plus. So this is how we go through and check all of the things we have imported or added inside of this window here. So we're now gonna take our temp name variable and set it equal to our project item dot children and we're gonna grab the ith children and we're gonna say get media path. This is a built-in function that doesn't require QE that allows us to get the path. So what we can do is then say right line our temp name, just run this and see what we get. You can see we're getting the full file name and path to each of the files inside of our project. And now what I'm gonna do is simply slice out the file name, which it would read inside of the project items over here. So for example, key.wave, key.mov, tv.wave. So how do we do this given that footage could be from any number of locations with any different number of subdirectories? Well, what we're gonna do is take our temp name and slice it. So what we'll do is say this name, which is gonna equal the name of this current footage we're looking at, is equal to something. We're gonna call our temp name and slice it. Now when we slice a string, we select a start point and an end point. So ideally our start point's gonna be right here and our end point's gonna be to the end of the file. Well, to get to the end of the file, it's quite easy. So for the second argument, I'm going to give it our temp name dot length, which is just the length of the string. But to get to here, it's a little bit more complicated. What is a common element we have in here that we can use? Well, we have this slash here. So if we actually call the last index function, which will search for the very last instance of something, I could search for the last index of an, the letter A, and it would go, so there's an A right here, but there's also an A right here, and there's an A right here. So the last A is actually right here. Well, if we go to the last slash, it's gonna take us right before the file name. So let's do that. We're gonna slice it from temp name dot last index of, and double backslash or forward slash, whichever one it is, because um, if we just do one, it's actually a weird carriage return and we need to make sure we have two so it reads as just one. So this name is gonna be equal to our whole name here, the last index of the backslash. So it's actually, we need to add one, so that way we don't just get before the backslash, we don't want to include it. So we're gonna say plus one over to the length. Just to make sure we're getting what we want here, we're gonna write the line for this name. And you can see now we're just getting the file names we want. Now I'm gonna go ahead and copy and paste our is video name and is audio name functions. And I'll go over them briefly again. Um, what we need to give it is a name. So what we're gonna give it is this name, the name of our file. So for example, let's say um, key.mov here. We're gonna give it the name key.mov. It has this list of extensions I've typed in. You can type in more or less if you want. Um, these are all video formats, except for that one. And essentially what it's gonna do is run through all of the uh, list of array of extensions here. And it's gonna ask, does our name have that in it? And it's gonna say, look, we have key MOV and there's dot MOV. So once it hits that, it's gonna return true. But if it never hits any of them, return false. And so then what we're gonna do is we're gonna say if is video name and we need to give it our this name and that's it we're gonna say is it true um, if we wanted to say is it false we'd add an exclamation mark in front to reverse the logic but we want to make sure it's true to make sure whatever file we're looking at is a video file and then we're gonna grab that merge array we previously talked about and push something into it um, since we're pushing in an, a video and an audio for every index we actually need to push two elements in Although we only have our video element right now, we need to actually initialize um, this index with a second um, sub-index so that we can put in the, the audio file later. Because I found that if you just give it the video file now, it's extremely hard, or actually impossible maybe, to uh, add in another index um, after that. So what I'm gonna do is push here project item dot children i. And then for the other one, which is gonna be later audio, I'm just gonna set it to null. And I think it's better to not use the name here. Um, we're just gonna grab the actual project item in here so that we can take it from the array 
insert it instead of having to go back in and search for it later, which would add a lot of processing time. So we're pushing in our current item, which we know is now a video based on the name. And for the audio portion of this index of the array, currently null, but we'll find it later. And actually we're gonna find it now. Um, we're gonna write a little complicated of a function, but that's the main meat of this script. I'm gonna grab our audio check variable and say equals, and I'm gonna check for audio counterparts. Now this is not a built-in function by any means, I just made this up. And we're gonna give it our project item dot children I. I'm also gonna give it this name. And let's go ahead and go down here and define this function. What it's gonna do is it's gonna take our original item here that we found, which we now know is a video file, and it's gonna take the name that we cut as well to make things a little bit easier. And it's going to search through the rest of the items over here in the project items panel. Then it's gonna see if there's an audio counterpart. Is there a file with the same name, but has an audio extension like MP MP3, WAV, that type of thing. Um, and you can set the parameters yourself, whether you want to search for a certain name match, a length match. This would sort of be um, the equivalent of when you click on merge clips and select one of the synchronized points. We're essentially writing the code for that synchronized point to be the name, but you could set it to be the time, the endpoint, or whatever you want. So let's go ahead and define our check for audio counterpart function. And inside of that, I'm gonna need a video item and a name. Then I'll create a variable called cut name and also I'm going to reuse those same variable names previously temp name and this name and for the cut name I'm going to slice up our current name and the way I'm going to slice it is just take off everything but the extension here so I just want TV and key for example so I'm going to take name and slice it from the beginning or zero all the way to name.length minus four, because we know that the extensions are all generally three letters and then a dot. So there's four characters we need to go back. Then I'm actually gonna recycle this code here where I loop through and uh, loop through all of the items in the project, because I'm gonna do that again. We're gonna set our temp name again, equal to the current media path. We're also gonna wanna recycle the this name code, because it's gonna be the same. Because remember, we've essentially sliced out the only the file name without the extension of our video file. And now what we want to do is as we're going through here and we have this name, we want to compare this name to our video file we previously just grabbed. If it's similar or if it has the audio extension, we want to make sure we grab that and set it as the audio counterpart. So inside of our for loop still, we're going to set an if statement, which is going to check if our case is true or not. We're gonna say this name dot index of our cut name. So if this name, the name that of the current item we're searching through, not our video file, we're looking for the audio file, remember? If it contains our cut name or just the name of our video file without the extension, if that is equal to negative one, that means it's a match and that we have an item that has that text in it. But that's not the only thing we wanna check. We could have multiple files with similar names in different formats. It could be multiple video files. So what we wanna do is also grab our is audio name, and we're gonna give it this name. So not only are we comparing our video and, audio and current file we're looking at, we're checking whether or not that file we're looking at is an audio file, which it needs to be. And again, you can go in and change all the audio extensions here as well as if you need to. So if this is the case, what, what have we come to the conclusion of? Well, we know for a fact that this is now, well, not necessarily a fact, but it's extremely likely that this audio file is an audio file and is the matching one. So now that we know that, what we're gonna do is return our project item dot children I and if all of it goes through without returning that child, we know there's no audio counterpart, so we'll return null. So now we know our audio check is gonna either bring us back the audio file that's equivalent or null if there was no equivalent. Okay, I gotta switch my battery, otherwise it's gonna die in the middle. So now we know our audio check is either gonna be null if there's no audio counterpart, or it's gonna have something contained in it if there is. So I'm gonna see if my audio check is true, we're gonna do something. If we found the audio counterpart, now we need to do something about it. So I'm gonna take my merge array, and I'm gonna to go to my merge array dot length minus one index, the very last one, and grab index one of that, which we know is gonna be the audio. 
and we're gonna set that equal to our audio check. And that's pretty much the whole process of the complicated part. Now let's go ahead and just do the quick code to create the sequence and ins insert the footage and all that. So I'll say this sequence is equal to our project.create sequence. So what I'm gonna do is just call this name and give it the name for the sequence. Then I need to get the video tracks of the sequence so I can insert the video. So I'll grab my video tracks variable and set that equal to this sequence dot video tracks. And then I'll duplicate that and change the one below it to audio tracks because we also need those. And then we'll grab video track one and set that equal to our video tracks index zero and duplicate it for our audio track again as well. And this is going to be the one that it's actually going to insert it on. So if your video, you know, has audio already, it's going to have an audio track already on layer one. So we want to change audio track to maybe two. So it'll be audio track number three instead. Make sure it's separated from the main clip. And then lastly, we need to insert these clips. So I'm going to grab my video track one and say insert clip. And we need to give it the clip we're inserting and where. So we're gonna give it the merge array. And again, we're gonna grab merge array dot length minus one, which will grab the most recently pushed thing and uh, give it to us. And we're gonna grab item zero, which is the video. And we're gonna insert it at time zero. And then duplicating that again for the audio. And we're going to grab index one right here instead and also insert it at zero. And then lastly, we're just gonna put in an else if the audio check came back as null or false or whatever you wanna put in for it. We're also basically just gonna grab our merge array. We're gonna grab merge array length minus one. And index one is gonna be equal to null. So if the audio check came back as false, there's not gonna be any audio there. And we're not gonna insert anything because we couldn't find any audio. So let's go ahead and run this and see that it's working. I'm getting an error on um, the creation of the sequence. I think I need to call my project item, not the project. Oh, it's actually called create new sequence. And I'm pretty sure I need to refer back to my project. And now I keep going because this is how bug testing goes sometimes. I'm gonna give it another argument. I'm not sure what it is, but now it's working. Okay, so we'll click on okay to create a new sequence. And then there's another one it found. So every time this pops up, you know it's found an audio counterpart. And click on OK. And we can see it's now added the video track to, to number one at time zero, the audio track to audio number three at time zero, and it will match them up all nicely. But yeah, that's going to do it for this week's video, guys. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, hit the like button and subscribe, of course, and the bell icon to be notified of new videos uploaded twice weekly. The code will be linked down below in the description in GitHub. And of course, if you haven't already down there, uh, go follow us on Instagram where I post a lot of behind the scenes and cool stuff before and after tutorials are posted. Thanks again for watching, everyone, and we'll see you in the next one.